Sony, there have been a lot of launches that have been yeah. going on. In fact, uh, you know, we were going to tell you all about all the launches in October, you know, since last All Space Considered, but there have really been too many. There's launches almost every two or three days now. And uh, so we thought we'd hit some of the highlights just recently. That was uh, on November 20th, Rocket Lab Electron Rocket, I should say, launched from New Zealand. Rocket Lab is a Los Angeles and New Zealand based company. And their goal is to launch small satellites, things like CubeSats and other tiny satellites, but at a low price. So, of course, we've learned from SpaceX that one of the ways you lower price, besides making a tiny rocket, which is what Rocket Lab chose to do, is to reuse things. So this particular mission was called Return to Sender because its main goal was to test a parachute system in the 40 foot tall uh, booster of the rocket and then uh, landed in the ocean off from New Zealand and then uh, see what condition it's in to evaluate what it will take to start reusing these uh, boosters. That'll save a lot of money. So here's the launch on, on November 20th. Everything went perfectly. You can go on. Uh, a few uh, minutes, or actually, it was almost an hour because it took a long time to drift, I think, from the, with the parachute. After the launch, the uh, booster did land in the ocean and was recovered in good condition. And here we see it being taken back to the factory. I don't know for sure that they're going to try using this particular booster, but again, they want to see since this experiment was very successful, just what it will take to uh, you know, perfect it so they can reuse them regularly. And uh, the payload uh, was a simple one, although it, it, it actually has a nice story. Uh, it was 3D printed out of titanium. Uh, so it actually is a manufacturing technique used for some of the space components. But this is Noam Chomsky. And it's from a, a, a game. And David, maybe, can you yeah. tell me again the name of the game? I, yeah, it I'm comes from Half-Life 2, episode Half 2. 2. And evidently, if you carry this figurine the whole way, to a launch, you get something special. And I won't do any spoilers for anybody that's going to go download it tonight and play it. Okay. Well, the uh, creator of Half-Life 2 did something very nice, which is he and uh, Rocket Lab agreed that for every person watching this live on YouTube, they would donate $1. So uh, between him and also the everyday astronaut who decided because people were confused and were also watching his stream with the idea that they were donating. He decided to do also match whatever he got. So together they raised over $400,000 for children's mm -hmm. charities at this launch, just from people watching it. So Fantastic. <laughs> that was kind of a nice sideline. All right, um, now uh, after the uh, crew test flight back, you know, if you, I think it was in April, now we've had the uh, NASA Crew Mission 1. So on the 15th of November, SpaceX launched its first full-up NASA mission. So this one is not a test mission. It's actually carrying a crew to do work on the space station. Shannon Walker, Victor Glover, Michael Hopkins, and Soichi Noguchi, who is a Japanese astronaut, uh, all of them veterans except for uh, Victor Glover was uh, the rookie astronaut in this one. But they'll be on the space station for months. And from now on, Dragon capsules will be you know, permanently attached to the space station. So the uh, spacecraft flew itself basically to the International Space Station, only a tiny insignificant problem with uh, air temperature and other gas temperature regulation. But that was fixed by very simple software fixes. The secret passenger on board, which also serves as a zero gravity indicator, you can see at the very top of the screen, well, with the green arrow, that's Baby Yoda, of course. Pictures from the space station as Dragon approached for its automated docking. And finally, the crew was on board and, and uh, had a brief ceremony. Uh, now, from now on, the crew of the space station will be larger. The most it normally was in the past was six. Recently, it's only been three because after the space shuttle missions and all, it was hard to keep a large crew on board. But now with uh, Dragon, with its ability to carry four people at a time, and plus the Soyuz being there, now you can safely, if you had to, evacuate seven people from the space station. So the crew is permanently larger. 
Here's a picture by Soichi of the uh, Earthlit side of the International Space Station. You see on the bottom left corner the dragon capsule and the moon, of course, beautifully dangling beneath. A few days later, November 21st, uh, is a launch from Vandenberg of a Falcon 9 rocket by SpaceX. And this is launching the Michael Freilich, which is a ocean level monitoring satellite from NASA and a number of European partners. So what we see is the launch here. And then just a few minutes later, the landing of the first stage on a landing pad just a short distance from the launch pad. So that's our California return of a Falcon 9. This one here is a launch by China. Who's? I had a question for you, Tony. Do you see this as a developing space race, perhaps, seeing that China has been posturing and, you know, some of the political aspects of things that are going on? Do you see us getting into a, a space race with them again? Well, I don't know if I'd call it a race so much as, um, you know, China has for a long time said that they want to develop the moon as a you know resource area to to further further exploration of the solar system so uh, so whether or not it's a race they're proceeding according to a plan that they've you know firmly established for a long time um, the US also kind of instigated some of this back with the constellation program but that was canceled um, now though Everybody's really interested in getting back to the moon. So whether or not it's a race, there certainly is a lot of inter international interest in, in focusing on the moon. It's not a race, and China said it's not a race because the U.S. You know, settled that back in 1969. No, but, but, this, but this is a launch to the moon that they've done. That's right. So, you know, as I said, it's part of a program. This is this is the uh, fifth probe and actually the third operating probe on the moon right now from China. So, you know, as I said, they're sticking to their plan. This is uh, the landing site that kind of curved area is Mari or a sinus iridum, which uh, we also saw with the Tangy 3 landing. So two fairly close to each other. Uh, the, the area it landed in is called Oceanus Procellarum, one of the seas of the moon, you know, kind of a lava basin. And uh, the idea was to, right after the landing, take pictures, get a sample, and launch that sample right back to Earth within hours of the landing. And all of this went flawlessly. Apparently, there was some slight glitch in the landing. And even though they were scheduled to show it live on TV, suddenly the, the coverage cut out and there was no word as to what happened for about an hour. It was something like the early landings of Falcon 9s on the uh, you know, the drone ships, we really didn't know what happened for a while. But anyway, so it seems to have worked well. Here's a picture of Mons Rimker off in the distance. And the next picture shows a sample being collected from the surface. And again, this was only like two or three hours after the landing. So this all happened pretty quick. Then they put that in a hopper, very much like what Patrick showed us with the uh, Osiris Rex. And it launched from the uh, landing pod, which is still working on the moon. And uh, it'll rendezvous with another spacecraft and then make it back to Earth. So, so it's on its way also as a sample from the moon, first collected by China. Actually, the first collected since 1976 when the Soviets did their last robotic collection of rocks on the moon. Mm. Now, is it going to beat the Hayabusa return, which is going to get here That's first? right. Actually, uh, half an hour from now, the uh, capsule return on Hayabusa 2, which was operating around asteroid Ryugu at the same time that uh, OSIRIS-REx was collecting stuff from Bennu, it actually will separate from the, the, I'm sorry, the capsule that collected stuff from Ryugu, collected by the Japanese uh, probe Hayabusa 2, will separate in about 30 minutes. And that probe will then head towards Australia, where in a, in a 24 hours from now, the uh, sample should land in Australia. Uh, there's live coverage available on YouTube. Uh, JAXA, AAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, has a number of channels that will be covering the key steps of this, and they do have English language. So if you just Google JAXA, YouTube, you'll see the different programs and whatever language you want to watch it in, it's there. Um, and then another important thing coming up this weekend, same day, and in fact, at the same time that Ryugu is landing 
I mean, the sample of Ryugo's landing in Australia, uh, within a few minutes of that is also the scheduled launch of a new SpaceX spacecraft. This is the Dragon 2. It's very much like what the astronauts rode to the space station in, except that it doesn't have the escape rocket system in it. And this is just for carrying cargo. So it can carry cargo and stay docked to the space station until they fill it back up again with experiments they run to return to Earth, and then it will land in the ocean, just like the crew version does. This is a lot bigger, though, than their earlier cargo carrying SpaceX thing. So this will happen Saturday. So, then so I hope somebody okay. contacted space traffic control to make sure that they don't collide. Well, the space <laughs> is big, I know, but we're getting to that point. All these launches, there well, is coordination between you know, governments. Starlink satellites or something. Right? Yeah, you got to dodge the Starlink. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking right, of SpaceX. So, but, but what space nerds are actually worried about this weekend isn't any of those normal flights. It's so uh, something that could happen as early as Sunday. Um, this is the SN8 Starship prototype spacecraft in Boca Chica, Texas. Now, this has been delayed a number of times, but the tests have been getting better and better with it. So we're expecting as early as 9 a.m. on Sunday, this could take off. It'll go up 12 and a half kilometers, produce a really scary maneuver where it has to kind of belly flop and then swing on itself and then land on its tail, as we've seen like with the Falcon 9. But this thing is as big as the fuel tank on a, on a space shuttle. And it's the upper stage of a thing that will dwarf the Saturn V when it's in full operation. And Elon Musk today reiterated that these could start landing on Mars with cargo by 2024, followed by people in 2026. And he's sticking by that. So that's why a lot of people are really interested in this. This is a very big game changer if it works. So anyway. Stay tuned, yeah. as it says. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's certainly something to watch.